Okay, my next question comes from Michael Flynn, who is a Rathgormach based farmer. Michael. Good evening, Pennon. Uh, we're all living now in a high state economy. Agriculture has been picked as one of the drivers of our economy. What will you do as an individual or party to aid agriculture in the growth we so badly need in exports and future employment? And I'd like a chance to respond to and to okay, the George Holden. First of all, the farming sector wouldn't be my strong point, but uh, certainly I think farming at the moment is going through a good a good uh, phase. Uh, milk quotas are are up. The the, the milk the dairy the dairy herds are they're more invest, invested in the in the dairy herds. Uh, from our point of view. Like, really, farming would, wouldn't be my strong point. Oh, okay, okay, fair enough. Right. We're bringing then, um, David. Well, the first thing is that I see agriculture as one of the uh, economic drivers for recovery. And the 2020 Food Harvest Report talks about increased production of about between 25 and 50 percent, whether it's in dairy, whether it's in beef or pig meat, and across all of these sectors. But if farmers and entrepreneurs are in a position to be able to deliver on that increased production. They are going to need capital, and at the moment they can't get the money from the banks, and they will also need employment grant supports, because if you increase the size of your farm, and you want to increase your output, then you need to take on more workers, and they simply can't afford to do it. So there has to be some form of employment grants from Enterprise Ireland and other bodies as well. And there's also issues in relation to the abolition of the milk quota is going to open up again opportunities for milk farmers, for dairy farmers. But again, the supports have to be given. And if you look at the pig <coughs> sector, for example, or the vegetable sector at the moment, these are sectors which are going through turmoil. And we're going to have a reform of CAP in 2013. We, we again have to make sure that, uh, we, that any future government stands up for Irish farmers. And we have the World Trade Organization talks, which are coming up as well. Those talks are going to be crucial for the future of the agriculture sector because we know what happens, for example, with cheap imports coming in from Brazil and Latin American countries as well. If the deal is done with the Latin American countries, a bad deal in terms of world trade talks is going to be very, very bad for this country. But th the last point I'll make is this. If we want to encourage young farmers to get into farming, and we need to encourage young farmers because we've seen a drop in both farm incomes and also the numbers of people who work on the land, we have to return schemes like the insulation aid scheme and the early retirement scheme to make sure that we reduce the ageing uh, factor as well in terms of farmers. The vast majority of farmers are over 60. A lot of young people who want to farm are simply not given the opportunity and those schemes were taken away and they should be replaced. Uh, ben Nutty, briefly. Yeah, uh, I would uh, have the support uh, to mail of the, the markets in the future, absolutely. Um, I would be careful as well regarding the energy futures. I think it's very important that we feed ourselves as well, because there are going to be challenges coming ahead, and we've got to make sure that everything's in order in relation to that. So just to add to that, that's what we can add. Okay, Polly uh, Coffey? Yeah, Michael, I think agriculture is very important, not just to water, but to the Irish economy. And David quite rightly said the Harvest 2020 uh, <coughs> programme, which is a government programme, and I give them credit for it, is a visionary pro programme, but it needs to be fully supported by the Irish state if we are going to exploit its full potential. And, you know, the cap reform negotiations will happen soon. It is important that Ireland has a strong negotiation team in those negotiations to get the best deal for Irish farmers. Fine Gael are the party that is best placed in our alliances with the European People's Party across Europe to get the best deal for Irish farmers. We also want to introduce a fair trade bill that will stop a lot of the unfair practices that are, uh, um, I suppose, barring <coughs> primary producers and farmers from accessing the markets like supermarkets, removing the hello money and all of that. And also food labelling, a, a unique Irish food labelling system that identifies quality Irish food is very important so that we can access wider European and markets beyond. And, and the final thing, farmers need to do what they're doing best, and that is producing. At the moment, they're tied up with bureaucracy, inspections, and we're hearing that on a daily basis now as we go around County Waterford. We need to streamline a lot of that, allow farmers to get back to the land, the milking parlours, the tillage, whatever they do, and get them producing. Because okay, Ireland can be a mass exporter of Michael, food. Michael, back to you briefly. Yeah, I'd like, supplementary is just a reaction. Yeah, no, I'd like to see um, whoever invests in the farm, that it's focused on them, that, and 
I just also like to say, no one actually mentioned it here tonight, WIT, if that was upgraded to university status, to that, that, that would have a big issue okay. in training our young farmers going okay, forward. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from Michelle Tebris. Michelle, where are you? There. Just one question, please, of the four. Do you good Billy, uh, the panel, and Nadina Agesh talks to Oil and gas multinationals are siphoning off Ireland's wealth and paying a pittance to the Irish people for the privilege. Do you or your party have plans or policies to develop our vast gas or oil resources in the national interest and not the private profit? profit? John Halligan? Yes, um, from the 60s onwards we did sell off all our wind. Uh, no question about that. We sold, we, sell, we sold it off for a very, very small profit, very little tax. And we are at present repatriating 32 billion euro out of the country from oil, gas, multinationals. Now, earlier on, we were speaking about creating um, employment and dealing with unemployment. And first of all, I would say that I tend to, to, to the corporate tax 12.5%, just in case anybody jumps in on top. So I would leave that for the time being. I think now, and the Congress of Trade Unions have said this, we need to concentrate on the 32 billion that's been, been repatriated by oil companies, by big multinationals out of, the company, out of the country. Surely, it's not too much to ask if you're making huge profits like that. Some of them making huge profits, paying minimum wage, minimum wage, and getting workers to work 20 hours one, one week, another section to work 20 hours where they, where they don't even know from one week to the other. These are some of the big companies here. Uh, if they'll be able to go on a holiday. Surely it's not too much for any government to come into power to say, we want you to invest some of that money back into the country. It would be a small amount of money, and could you imagine with the deficit that we're in at present, with the money we've had to borrow uh, uh, from the EU, that if we were to put some sort of a cap on the multinationals to leave some of that money in the country, I don't think it's an awful lot to ask them. I think that okay. would be one way of Thank you, John. Show us one. I think we are paying the price at the moment for uh, previous governments for selling off our natural resources. And I think it's time now that, that we call a halt to that. And I think uh, any government in the future, and the Labour Party will be committed to retaining um, our natural resources, retaining ownership of our natural resources within, within the country itself, because we can't continue to sell off any, any company uh, natural resources that, that are make, making profit. That happened in the past. We've seen it over the coral fields up there, and you know we just can't continue to do that. So we will be committed to retaining those uh, natural resources, uh, you know, in, in public and in state ownership. Joe Yeah, uh, looking back to the the history of exploration in, in the Irish seas, uh, the course uh, we see back in the 1960s and into the 1970s is a lot of sweetheart deals done with multinationals, and the pretext for giving away these sweetheart deals was. We needed the capital and the expertise to fund and research and deliver the exploration. Now that was all right in the 1960s and in the early 70s when we were largely an agrarian economy. But since then we've had free uh, secondary education and all that for our, our youngsters and our graduates and high tech graduates. And we don't have that deficit of skill anymore. We have the people here who have the knowledge and the skill and the expertise to lead exploration and we need our own government to invest. Okay, Joe Tobin of the Workers Party. Billy, we have a situation at the moment where the Norwegian government are making more money out of the coral oil and gas fields than the Irish government. Ludicrous situation. We have to build and and charge these people for for exploring and taking our oil as such and, and gas from, from our shores. In the next 20 years, we should be going for the next 20 years to, to get our natural resources back. Like Norway did, they're, they're a thriving country. They have uh, graduates coming in from, from Sweden and around those areas coming in to work in, in Norway, a place that was a, at the back end of the Arctic Circle in the 60s with sardines as their main uh, form of revenue. So, so let's see. Thank you very much. Do you want to reply to that briefly, Michelle? You've got a minute. Yeah, uh, the car field alone is valued at 420 billion, yet not one cent will come to the Irish people. Fianna Fáil, through corruption and incompetence, handed over this entire. No, 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 you're making it a mistake. I just wanted you to respond to how. Yeah, this is economic treason. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was a, 
Because that was almost the part of the broadcast. We can't have that. Sorry about that. We'll take our next break. Thank you for your question. Thank you.